What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Love After Lockup, Season 5, Episode 7, Seeing Red. And let's get started with Joy and Red. So Red is finally released from prison. Joy is there. His mom, his sister, his cousins are all there to greet him. Anytime the prisoners come out, anytime that they're released from prison, it is really exciting to watch. I mean, I have a big old goofy grin on my face every single time I watch another scene where a prisoner gets released and their family and friends are there waiting for them so he goes to hug his mother first as he should then he hugs his sister then he hugs joy he tells joy that he thinks that she's beautiful and in his confessional he tells us that joy is the woman for him and he wants to spend the rest of his life with her we also see that across his neck he has i'm assuming her name joy uh j-o-y is tattooed across his neck so at some point you know um you know this is it got real serious with them i'm assuming and, um, so, you know, he says this is the love of his life and he, if he could, he would have gotten married to her right then and there. So let's see if he keeps that same energy throughout the entire season. So all of them go out to eat. They talk about Joy's pregnancy because the mom and the sister love bringing up how Joy cheated on Red and got pregnant on him. So they talk about, you know, Joy cheating on him and how did the pregnancy affect him? And Red says it, he struggled with that. It was really difficult for him to find out that joy was seeing other people and that she had gotten pregnant by another man but he says that he worked through it you know he says he was just really in his feelings and I'm thinking to myself if you ever need to be really in your feelings um I guess it's when you find out that your current girlfriend got pregnant by somebody else while you're stuck behind bars so he said that he processed his feelings and now he's okay with it and he is ready to be a father to joy's little boy and he just got over all of that you know he got over the fact that she was cheating and got pregnant by somebody else his mom brings up how other females were giving him money red says that when joy cheated on him that's when he felt like he had the right to go talk to other females and so he struck up these friendships with these other women and they began sending him money i think he said at one point it was up to eight women that he was communicating with that was sending him money joy says that you know she has to believe him when he says that they were just friends friends it was uh, strictly platonic there was nothing sexual going on and so she says that she's going to have to believe her man because she doesn't want to be that kind of woman that's always accusing her man of cheating and you know feeling really insecure and having to look through his phone and do all that stuff she does not want to be that kind of girlfriend we'll see if she keeps that same energy throughout until the end of the season so in prison um, like I said he had eight different women that he was communicating with he says he loved loves joy he loves joy but he also loves the attention of women he says after being stuck with all these men for so many years he loves to get attention from women he steps outside um he tells everybody that he has to go use the bathroom but he actually went to go step outside and when he went to go step outside his cousin acted like he was looking for him and found him outside because his cousin was like man you didn't go to the bathroom you outside so he asked to use his cousin's phone because guess who you had to call y'all the man that said that you know joy is the woman for him he don't want nobody else he's ready to get married um he's been out about eight nine hours from prison he gets on his cousin's phone and he calls a female now we just have to assume that um i mean i don't even think we should be assuming he calls a female next episode we might find out that he was trying to call his grandmother or something but he was trying to call some female because he said oh she's not even going to answer right now um she's probably at work so let's not jump the gun and let's give red the benefit of the doubt that it wasn't some you know random chick that he was trying to hook up with eight hours after being released from prison and I'm um, seeing the love of his life for the very first time joy moving on to Andy and Brittany so they're in the it's in the morning time and they're in the kitchen um he's making breakfast he's making pancakes and she tells him you don't even like pancakes and he says yeah I know but you do and so she's like well how are we how am I ever going to get to know who you really are because you're always doing doing things just to appease me you're always doing the things that I like to do for example making pancakes and going fishing and he goes well this is a real me the real me is someone who likes to uh he says the real me is someone who likes to compromise and accommodate you know accommodate for other people or whatever so Brittany says you know that 
Uh, she tells us in her confessional that she's feeling very triggered by how much he is suffocating her, that uh, she just wants to call somebody and get high. But she's in the kitchen watching him make pancakes. So she straight up asks him for the rest of her money because he had promised her 1200 and he's only given her five and she's given that money to her kids which I'm pretty sure he was not anticipating that and so she's waiting for the other seven and he tells her that he's going to get it on Monday and she's like well why can't we get it today and he says well I can't pull out that much money today I mean, I know she's been gone in prison for a couple of years, but it hasn't been so long that she doesn't know how ATMs operate. You can go get money from an ATM any day of the week. I don't know why he told her he couldn't get money that particular day. I don't know. Like, does he like what <laughs> does he think she was in prison for like 30 years or something? So uh, she he tells her, well, we'll have to go get it Monday. Of course, either he doesn't have the money or. Or he wants to try to keep her with him um, as long as he can. And so he's just going to string her along with promises of getting this money for her. So um, they talk about the car because he was also supposed to get a car for her. He says, yeah, I, I did get the car. Um, you know, it's the car that we were driving in. And she said, but I thought you were going to give me the car. And he's like, well, you can drive it. Or you can take me to work in it. Um, I'm giving it to you to, for you to drive. And she says, well, well, where's the title and he says that it was still being financed so she's like you know this is how he's trying to control me by um you know not I don't know what she was trying to say but this was another example of Andy trying to control her because he's not going to give her a car you know clear what, what's the word uh free and clear or you know whatever he, like hand over the title to her he's still financing the car so she can't really own it so she's like well this is how he's trying to control me girl look I don't understand this whole thing of him trying to control you. You keep talking about how, you know, this man is doing all these things to you. You got into his car voluntarily and willingly and freely. You got into his car and you drove all the way to Rome, Georgia with him. You could have told him back in wherever the hell y'all were at. You could have been like, no, I'm not getting in the car with you and I'm not going to Rome, Georgia. I'm going to stay here with my children. You know, the children that she likes to speak so highly of, the children that she can't wait to get back to and rebuild a relationship with, the children that she's uh, blaming him for not helping her facilitate this relationship with them you, you were already with your kids and you turned around and walked away from your kids to go to Rome Georgia with Andy so this whole thing about oh he's so controlling he's trying to control me girl if anyways let me let me let me stop let me stop no let me not stop because girl if you really got it like that and you're that street smart street smart and you think that you know you played Andy and why don't you go play another man now you're out and you're free why don't you go find another trick go find another victim another prey uh to help you out in the city that your kids live in so you'll be closer to your children and you can find another trick to take care of you financially until you get on your feet or whatever your end goal is so um, she talks about how he's trying to control her because he can't give her the car just, you know, clear and free. She demands to see his bank account. She wants to see how much money he has in his bank account. He's like, I ain't got no problem showing you that. Sure. Here. So he pulls up his online banking and he shows it to her. And with all of the bravado and the gestures that he was doing while he was like, you know, pulling it up on his phone and sticking the phone in her face, like here, you know, look how much you would have thought this man had like a hundred thousand dollars in that bank account. This man barely have 3000 he barely have three like really Andy you're you're gonna uh feel so triggered and you're gonna feel so pressured by this woman to show the whole world that you a former cop only barely you barely have three thousand dollars I would have kept that to my damn self I would have been like girl it ain't none of your business how, how much is in my bank account you just worry about that seven hundred dollars that I promised you that's all you got to worry about but like a a, a simp a doofus he shows her his bank account and this man barely has anything in there uh when I say that it's compared to how he was talking I'm pretty sure he was talking you know he was uh talking real big to her when she was in prison um talking real big about all the things that he owned the cars the money and the bank accounts and all of that this man barely has three thousand dollars that is like one mortgage payment away from being broke so um she looks at the bank account and she sees that it's got like $2,775 or something like that. And she goes, that's all. 
And he's like, yeah, that's all. And so she then demands to see the fraud because he kept on telling her how he didn't have, uh, he had a lot of money, but there was some type of fraud activity on his account. And so, <laughs> which, you know, she saw right through that. She didn't believe him at all. So he shows her um, where um, he had taken out or someone had spent a hundred dollars for some online casino. And he was like, you see, it's right here. Here's the fraud. And she was like, you do online gambling. So that could have been you using your own money. He was like, I don't go to that website. I don't use that website for my online gambling. Andy it's just getting worse and worse and worse. So we see how broke he is. We see how he lied about fraud on his um, account. There was no fraud. Plus, he didn't even report any fraud to the bank. He's just showing these withdrawals or these deductions of $100 for some um, online uh, some online gambling website. That's all he's showing her. And it just gets worse. And y'all, when you thought it couldn't get any worse, he was now he's upset. Now he's frustrated with her and he wants the camera people to leave because he takes off his mic. When he takes off his mic, for whatever reason, he had to like completely lift up his shirt to take off his uh, microphone. And we see Andy in all of his glory. Um, we see the y'all I can't even I have I. I'm in no position to talk about it, anybody else. But one thing's for sure and two things for certain. I'm not lifting up my shirt on national television to show anybody any skin. Okay, so he had no business exposing us to, to all that. I don't want to body shame or anything like that. But really, like I said, I am not... I'm not in a position to show anybody anything. But I'm not going to be on TV showing it. Like, and Let's just move on. So... Brittany says that, you know, she was really excited to see where this relationship was going. She says that he just needs to really work on himself. And I'm like, girl, stop. Stop with all of the, mm -mm, no, ma'am. Um, you are not excited about this relationship. You're excited about his money. You thought this man, you thought this man really had uh, money to him. And so you were excited about getting your hands all over that. Uh, you don't give a damn if he works on himself or not. You could care less. It was just all about the money. He says something about, you know, I'm beginning to worry that, you know, this was just a money grab. Now you're realizing it. Hell yeah, it was a money grab. It was a money grab as soon as y'all first started communicating with each other while she was still in prison. So, um, you know, obviously she's ready to move on because he doesn't have anything. She never liked him, liked him. She just liked what he could do for her. Now that she sees he can't do much of anything. Um, yeah, we're, I don't know. I don't know how much longer we're going to see these people on this show, but I'm pretty sure the love story between Andy and Brittany has come to a screeching halt. Moving on to Asante and Renika. So Renika confronts Asante at the hotel. She comes into his room. She's looking for the other female. The other female is long gone, of course, or not long gone, but probably just, you know, hiding in some other area of the hotel. So she says that she is done with Asante because um, he let her on. And he lied to her about, you know, everything. He said he wasn't talking to nobody else. All these females are his aunties. And, you know, she confronts him for, with all of that. And, you know, she said she's, she's, she's done. She says, you didn't care about me. You're just leading me on. You're just lying, et cetera, et cetera. So Asante admits to the producers that the morning that he left Renika's house, um, or the house that she was staying in. I think it was her friend's house. I don't know. The morning that he, we saw him on the uh, security camera walking out, like a, it was like still dark outside. That particular morning, um, they asked him, so where were you going? Oh, I was just going to my auntie's house to get a phone. And the producers were like, at five o'clock in the morning when it's still dark outside. And he finally admitted that obviously he went to go see a female so someone one of his females had bought him a phone and he wasn't he was going there for phone and sex okay he was going there for phone and sex so he admits to that he says yes I have been talking to other females it's not just been it has not just been Renika I've been talking to another female I've been talking to my baby mama who you know the woman that I'm really in love with etc cetera, etc cetera. so they're in the hallway they're arguing she you know she's yelling at him she's cussing him out he says he's not going to argue with a female so after she gets all of that out of her system you know she turns around she walks away she goes back into the car that was waiting for her with the private investigator and I'm pretty sure 
this relationship has also come to an end. So I don't know what else to say. I'm glad she realized it now. I'm so glad that Renika realized it before she introduced this man to her children. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly how long after this, um, Asante passed away, but, um, at least they're able to put closure on this relationship. And I don't know what else to say. Moving on from there, we have Chelsea and Mikey. So Chelsea, they're waking up in the morning. They're still at the hotel. And we find out that once again, you know, they did not have sex. And so Mikey is like really frustrated now because this is the one thing that he was really looking forward to with Chelsea after being gone for so long in prison. And she's still not giving up the cookies. And of course, you know, she's already told us that that is not in the stars, that it's not going to be happening uh between them because men have used her in the past and she wants to approach this relationship differently so she wants to take this a lot slower in the you know in the romantic department so they wake up in the morning and someone calls her who was the person that is watching her children and this person tells her that he's been getting her mail and she's got um she got a letter from social security saying that her benefits i guess have been cut off and her food stamps have been cut off so she's you know very stressed out about that because this is how she takes care of her children so she's wondering how she's going to take care of her kids you know with no money coming in uh, mike comes in and she's trying to explain to him what's going on and she's so frustrated with everything you know she her benefits got cut off she's got this sexually frustrated boyfriend on the other side you know she can't be interpreting for him while she's talking to her friend on the so chelsea is going through it on top of that she's got to drive this man to go see his lawyer so they get to the lawyer's office she refuses to come out of the car <laughs> She doesn't want to come into the car with him because she's got her own problems. You know, she's got her own her, her own crap to deal with. So he goes inside to talk to the lawyer and he wants to know if he has a case against um, the prison because they violated his civil rights. When he had a stroke in prison, they refused to give him proper medical care. They refused to act in a timely manner. Plus, they had him handcuffed when they took him to the hospital. When they finally got him to the hospital, he was in handcuffs. You know, he was like on the verge of death. He just suffered a stroke. And, you know, all of this is happening. So... The lawyer, I guess, I don't know if the lawyer was willing to take on the case or not. Of course, the lawyer has to do more research to see if it's worth his time. So he tells Mike, if there is going to be any money, we're looking at probably, you know, six to eight months, maybe a year. So he comes back into the car. He tells Chelsea, you know, what's going on. He gives her an update and he can tell that she's still in her funky mood, where she has every right to be because she's going through some serious stuff back home. So he's like, you know, what's wrong with you? Why are you still mad? And she doesn't really want to talk about it. And so he's like, you know what? But if you're going to be like this, if you're going to give me all this attitude, then I don't want to ride with you. So he gets out the car and she drives off. <laughs> and she's five, five hours away from her kids. So she really ain't got nowhere to go right now. But she was like, okay. And she drove off. And he was like, wait, if she don't come back to get me, then I know it's over. Well, why did you get out of the car? <laughs> you know, she's in, she's in a bad mood. So she's in a bad mood. And she has the right to be in a bad mood. Let her be in her moment. Let her be in her feelings. You know, she'll get through it. She'll get over it eventually. There was no need for you to come out the mark, come out the car, Mike. That was just a little bit too dramatic. Moving on to Louie and Melissa. So, um, as we saw in the last episode, they were taking those dance lessons. Melissa got mad because she felt like there was a lot of flirtation going on between Louie and the dance instructor. So then she drops him off at his friend's uh, pizza parlor. And so he hung out with his friend for a little bit. And then he took an Uber back to the hotel because she wasn't going to come back and get him. So he takes the Uber back to the hotel. He brought her a heart-shaped pizza. And um, she's in the gym working out. So they start having a conversation. She says that she's really worried worried about going back to New Jersey because she thinks that he's going to be messing around with other girls and he tries to uh, convince her that's just not me I wouldn't do that to you I want to be with you for the rest of my life uh, I'm not going to be with other women you just have to trust me etc etc so what choice does she have she has to go back to Jersey she can't take him with her so she's just going to have to you know leave it up to God and hope and pray that it works out for the best then they eat the really dry cold pizza then the next time that we see them she says taking him to the dentist because his teeth are really messed up so she takes him to the dentist they give him an exam they give him an examination and basically it's going to be about 40 grand 
Okay. He has a lot of issues. So he can get the dental um, implants, which are more like real teeth, you know, where they uh, like implant each individual tooth. But the problem is his sinuses have dropped. So that might not be the best option for him because you're going to have to have like, he's going to have to have surgery on his sinuses, I guess, to lift them back up. And then they'll have to do the surgery for the teeth. So that's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And Melissa tells us she's going to be the one that's going to have to pay for it because he doesn't have a job. I don't know why his mom can't pay for it. I'm pretty sure his mom, you know, wants her little boy um, to have, you know, some beautiful pearly whites. So I don't know why either Melissa and mom can go half and half or the mom can dig into her retirement, you know, she seems to like want to do anything and everything for her son. And of course, just going to probably be, you know, um, there's going to be some strings attached to that if the mom decided to do that, but he needs to get his teeth fixed. And Melissa is like adamant about him not getting grandpa teeth dentures. She's like, I don't want to have to wake up in the middle of the night and see your dentures floating around in a cup in the bathroom. No, I don't want that. I don't want to turn over and look at grandpa mouth. So, um, I don't know what they're going to do. I have no idea what they're going to do. And I mean, it's just really sad that in this country for people to, you know, get their teeth fixed, it's, you know, it costs more than a car. It's just really sad. The cost of medical costs. Anyways, so it's just really sad. Anyways, that's all I have to say. I don't think I have anything else to add. Oh, yes, I do. Sheree and Anthony. How can I forget Sheree and Anthony? Okay, so Anthony, um, his PO calls him back and tells him, yes, you can go to the damn party, but you're going to have to come back at 1 a.m. because that was the whole issue of whether or not he can attend the party that Sheree had planned for him. So the PO says, yes, but you have a 1 a.m. curfew. So Sheree's son and her twin brother Debo come over and um, Debo has a conversation with Anthony like hey you know um, are you really ready to take on my sister because she's a, she's a lot she's a handful and Anthony tells the brother this is what I need she's so different from other women that I've dated because I normally date women who let me control the relationship so your sister's the complete opposite of that and this is what I need because she gives me structure so I guess he liked the itinerary and knowing what to do every hour of the day and her planning out you know the whole day for him minute by minute I guess that's what he's into even though he said it felt like being in prison all over again so I don't know so um they talk about the son he says that you know he's looking forward to forming a relationship with her son because he sees him as her child I mean as his child as well and so yeah he's ready to take on the role of bonus dad for uh Sheree's little boy and um Anthony and his mom they go ring shopping right because he wants to propose, no, not to propose, because everybody thinks that they're already married, remember? Everyone thinks that they're already married because Sheree lied to everybody and told them that her and Anthony were already married. And so he wants to uh, buy her a ring and her other ring, I guess she threw it away or something. She tossed it when she found out that he was still legally married to somebody else. And that's the reason why they couldn't get legally married because he was married to someone else. But nobody knows that right now. So he finds a ring for her. And the ring was really pretty. I thought for $1,500, it was really, really, really pretty. The ring looked a whole lot better than um, the ring that we saw. I, I forgot their names. But it was the lady who owned the, was it an insurance company? And she wanted her husband to run the company for her in prison on love during lockup. And she took his money. She took money out of their bank account. Like, I don't know how much it was. It was like a, an ungodly amount of money to go buy this ring, which to me really didn't impress me. It was like 20,000, 10,000. I think it was $10,000. I don't know, 15,000 or something like that. And I felt like the ring that Anthony bought for Sheree at 1500 looked a whole lot better but that's just my personal opinion so Anthony he pulled out a fat wad of money and he paid for that ring in cash I'm like where, where do y'all get this money like straight out of prison I mean you must have some people out there that really 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 love you to put that kind of money on your books that's my review for real now thank you so much for joining me I really do appreciate it on your way out please don't forget to rate the video if you like this content uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll definitely talk to you later bye